Hello everyone, and welcome to another loosely scripted editorial. This is something a little bit different, as for this video I wanted to talk about how to get started watching Star Trek. Star Trek is one of the most universally recognisable things in pop culture, but it's been going on for over 50 years and has an absurd amount of spin-off shows and movies. So if you are someone who has never watched Star Trek and wants to get into it, or if you're a Trekkie who wants to get a friend or a family member into Star Trek, here is my two cents about how best to do that. Now for the sake of flexibility, I wanted to provide two options. One for complete newcomers, and another for fans who want to get somebody else into the franchise. Option one for newcomers is incredibly simple. If you want to get into Star Trek, here's how you do it. Pick a Star Trek show which you think looks good, and just start watching it. Despite how much content is in the Star Trek franchise, I feel like a lot of Trekkies vastly overstate how important continuity is between each series. Because while yes, certain shows rely on established elements or reference previous shows, none of the spin-offs are direct sequels to any other show, and they rarely cross over either. I also feel like at this point everyone, even non-Star Trek fans, have heard a lot of the most famous Star Trek characters or aliens, so a lot of the legwork is already kind of done just through pop culture awareness. For example, if you start Deep Space Nine, chances are you know who Captain Picard is and you've heard of the Borg, therefore you already have a basic understanding of the events and whatever you're less clear on is pretty well communicated visually, or through the dialogue. While the Cardassians and Bajorans were also introduced during the next generation, again, everything you need to know about the two species and the conflict between them is easy enough to grasp through the dialogue. And yes, while the Maquis and their relationship with the Cardassians was set up in Deep Space Nine, it's not exactly crucial to understand this to get what's going on in Voyager. While it does take a little longer to figure it out from the dialogue, the viewer is able to pick up on the backstory as the first season goes on. The original series, The Next Generation and Enterprise work perfectly well as standalone shows and are mostly episodic anyway. While the modern shows are more serialised, Discovery was designed to essentially relaunch Star Trek on the small screen, and Picard already works due to that pre-existing pop culture awareness I mentioned earlier, and the first episode even provides a Cliff's Notes backstory in a way. The one exception to this is probably Star Trek Lower Decks, as a lot of the humour in that show relies on being familiar with Star Trek already. I don't think it's impossible to enjoy the show without already being a fan, but it certainly enhances the experience. But in general, I feel like people kind of overthink getting into Star Trek. It's not all that complicated. Sure, you can look up a timeline if that helps you in understanding the larger context, but it's pretty easy to just start watching whichever show takes your fancy. The movies, I think, are a little different, as The Wrath of Khan takes after Space Seed, and the following two films are direct sequels to that, so with the movies, it's probably best to watch those in order, but for the shows, just take your pick. There is, however, another option. This is for those people who have a friend or family member they want to get into Star Trek. This is slightly different, as we Trekkies are more familiar with some of Star Trek's weaker eras. For example, we know the first two years of The Next Generation aren't very good, and a newcomer possibly risks being put off by these initial episodes. Which is why I think The Next Generation from Season 3 onwards works so well as the gateway Trek. The Next Generation is pretty episodic, so it's very easy to just jump in anywhere. I'd say if you want to get someone into Trek, pick a really good standalone episode from TNG. If they like the vibe, show them a few more, and if they're curious enough to go back to see how it all started, maybe provide a little caveat that the first two seasons aren't as good. Someone I got into Star Trek this way actually still enjoyed those early years though, so who knows. But I think it's wise to get someone invested in the good Star Trek to maybe avoid the risk of them being put off by the bad Star Trek. Now, I know this will be a controversial statement for some because we just can't escape these kind of people in Star Trek videos, but the more modern Star Trek stuff is also a fantastic gateway. Once again, I have quite a few friends who got into Star Trek with either the 2009 movie or with Star Trek Discovery. Regardless of what you think of this era of Star Trek, speaking anecdotally anyway, after these friends of mine watched the Kelvin movies and Discovery, they immediately became more curious about the older shows and movies. Currently, there aren't any new Star Trek movies, and the current Star Trek shows take breaks between seasons, so the older shows and movies are the perfect way to scratch that Star Trek itch in the meantime for new fans. Oh, you're waiting for the new season of Discovery? Well, maybe check out the original series where you can see more Pike and Spock. You're curious about these older adventures this Picard guy had? Well, lucky for you, there's seven seasons and four movies worth of that stuff. 
and by that point they can take their pick of Deep Space Nine, Voyager or Enterprise. So there you have it, getting into Star Trek is really not as complicated as it may seem, or as certain people make out. If you're a newcomer, you can literally start anywhere. Pick a show which sounds good and give it a try. Hell, if that one doesn't gel with you, there are way more for you to try. And if you're a Trekker who wants to get someone into it, then you're in luck because you know the best stuff to start them off with. I feel like the question of how to start watching Star Trek is similar to how to start reading comic books. From the outside, it seems complex and confusing, and the fans keep going on and on about continuity, so clearly that must matter, right? But once you're on the inside, you realise it's actually quite easy to follow, and the continuity you heard so much about really doesn't factor into things nearly as much as people made out. To Trekkies old and new, I'll say live long and prosper, and as always, have a good one. Timofej Nenarokov, I'm sorry, asks, Are you planning on reviewing the upcoming Foundation series from Apple TV? I think I will, yeah. The trailers have me interested, and I love the books, so I'm certainly keen to check it out. So I can see myself making a season 1 review for sure. Thank you for watching. If you like these videos, subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay up to date on my new uploads. If you want to help the channel grow, join my patrons or my YouTube members, where you can see videos early, as well as some other exclusive content. Speaking of which, I'd like to quickly thank all of my patrons and members who are now appearing on screen. Have a good one, and as always, live long and prosper.